I went to Australia the first time a number of years ago to give a lecture. A bright-eyed, bushy-tailed man named Bill Mitchell came to the lecture and then took me to dinner afterwards with a bunch of faculty. And uh, I found him quite engaging, quite interesting. I don't know how long passed, but next thing I knew, he was in my office. He thought that he could make my life easier by um, getting me into um, the computer. I, at that point, I was using a slide rule on T-square and triangles and stuff. <laughs> So I, I said, well, I don't like the images that come on the computer because they're dried out and they're, they're uh, not, not very inspiring. They're kind of awful. And so if you're going to try and sell me that kind of stuff, I'm not interested. He said, oh, I'll show you. So he took two of my projects, a project in Paris, American Center and the big fish sculpture for Barcelona. And what seemed like a few months, I guess, he came back with these two pictures. And the American Center pictures were awful. I couldn't stand them. I said, throw this away. It doesn't mean anything. I can't use it for that. But the fish thing glowed and had sort of a beauty to it that, that was engaging. So I said, well, uh, you struck out on the first one, but the second one is possible. He bonded with a then partner, Jim Glimpf, and uh, they kept egging me on, and pretty soon I found us using CATIA, the Dassault aircraft industry, uh, software. I mean, over time, we figured it out, figured out how to use it, and Bill was right. He followed our progress on our Gary Technologies, as we called it, and he was uh, advisory to everybody on that team. He was sort of a father figure to everybody, and I trusted him, so I mean, he was quite an engaging intellect. So he did by his consistency and his commitment, lead us into the path that we are now on. And when they got ready to build a new building, he asked me if I'd be interested. I was then interviewed by the campus architect who didn't have any interest in having a building by me on campus. I'm sure it was his uh, stealth activity that led to us being hired for that job. Well, I think he had a, a great uh, rapport with Chuck Vest, who was then the president. And uh, Chuck was very respectful and, and, uh, and counted on Bill's advice, I think. I got that feeling whenever we met. And it was his commitment to architecture and uh, the optimism about new ideas, um, having a role to play in the future of MIT. And it was his um, continuous shepherding throughout the process that enabled us to build the building, the status center and I think you can attribute its presence to Bill Mitchell. He wanted me to get involved with building an automobile with him, so I worked with his students, and we were engaged in, you know, the real issues of car design. We went to the factory, we saw how they built their model. For me, as a, somebody interested in making form and design and stuff like that, it was uh, process that I could uh, get excited about. I think for, for me, I was interested in expressing movement in architecture with inert materials. And 
that was my search to find a replacement for decoration and stuff. Naturally led me to airplanes and, and cars and boats and the process was, was enlightening to me and I think helped us with some of our more complicated buildings. Bill uh, was also interested in the, the higher level of thinking about the sociology of the car and, and how it could be manifested so it was better for the environment, better for people, and so on. So I was very interested in that. I think if architects um, are engaged at that kind of level, they'd probably be interested. No, he was a forward thinker and, you know, I could play with him. I could, I used to go to dinner with him when I went to Harvard to, to lecture or whenever I came to town for, for the Stata Center. Enjoyed his company immensely, his intellect immensely, his forward thinking immensely, and his respect for new thinking in architecture and design immensely. So I think, uh, uh, I felt a terrible loss when he died. I didn't, I wasn't very happy about that. Do they understand it now? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think Bill respected that it wasn't a pastiche, it wasn't an affectation, it was a genuine search for, for answers in a language that express the times we were in and and being interested in cars planes and forms of moving objects in the in the world uh, we we would we would have naturally connected i think uh, i think he was there with me he you know he's one of the few people that i always felt comfortable showing ideas that were incubating rather and not uh, expecting to get laughed at. So he, he, you know, he clearly understood where I was going, what I was doing it, and, and he supported it. So I, I don't know if his writings had an effect or not. I'm, I hope they did. <laughs> yeah, I think I think a few weeks ago, I said something like that. I said, get Bill Mitchell on the phone. I need him. I did say that. And I have this complicated uh, process going with, with G GT and all that. And I think he would be able to explain it to me. So when I get frustrated, I think, I think of him. But I actually did say that the other few weeks ago. I remember saying it. Get him on the phone for me. 